You know, sometimes I get tired of just reading forums and asking other people about their setups and reading dynos and compressor maps for turbos and just pondering and wondering and speculating. Sometimes, sometimes I just have to buy the part myself and try it out. Ladies and gentlemen, I present man's best friend. No, 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 not you. Come here, go outside. Come here. Let me present man's other best friend. The Turbo Charger. Welcome to Boost Vlogs. So what I have here is a Garrett GT2860R. To give you a frame of reference for the size of this turbocharger, what I run on my car is a GT2554R. It's the smallest ball bearing turbo that Garrett makes. Above that, you have a GT2560R, and then you have the 2860R, which is this right here. And there are actually a few different versions of the 2860R. There are two different versions of the cold side. One flows a little bit more than the other. And there are three different versions of the hot side, two different trims, two different ARs, and they're kind of, uh, they jumble them all up and offer them in different packages. This version is, on the cold side and the hot side, the highest flowing, the highest trim, the highest AR available. Did I get this one specifically on purpose? No, I would have been okay with the lowest trim and lowest AR version of this, but I just kind of bought it used online and this is what I ended up with. Why did I buy this turbocharger? Uh, well, let me start off by saying it's not really a good idea to put this turbo onto a stock engine, not because the turbo itself is gonna break the engine. You don't really have to worry about putting so big of a turbo on the engine that it's gonna break because of the size of the turbo. That's really all in the tuning. But the problem with putting this on a stock engine is you're not really gonna be able to realize the potential, the 350 plus wheel horsepower potential of this turbo because you're still limited by the strength of the stock transmission, the stock engine. You're gonna be stuck with a whole bunch of lag and you're not really gonna be able to let the turbo shine. So why would you wanna live with the lag? You know what I mean? So the reason I bought this is because I'm tired of speculating, I'm tired of reading in the forums and reading dynos and just wondering what is it like to drive a Miata with a bigger turbo on it because a lot of people do it. I don't, I don't really recommend it, but I kind of want to know what it's like. And I would also like to see my stock 1.6 hit 300 wheel horsepower. I might break the car trying to do that, but I'm willing to do that for you guys. Uh, I think the car would be just sweet with 300 wheel and I'm gonna see if I can do it. So I'm probably gonna put this thing on in about two or three weeks. I'm actually running the quarter mile at Auto Club Speedway in one week, so I'm gonna run it just the way it is with the 2554 on it, with the power it makes. I wanna see what it does. And then I'm gonna put this on and start playing with the tune and see what we can do. I'll bring it up and have it dynoed and it's just gonna be a good time. So strap in and I hope you guys are ready for the ride. If you guys have any questions about turbo selection or turbochargers in general, go ahead and drop a comment down below. I'll do the best I can to either answer or point you in the right direction. Don't forget to subscribe for more Miata Turbo content. I will see you in the next one forums and listen to other people. Right, Ellie? Can you can you move so I can make this video? I I know you want to be in it very badly.